Hi, Lou Caruso for Surfcasters Journal. Today, I thought we'd take a minute and talk about real seats. Real seats on a, a, a surf rod, if you're going with a, a custom rod, is a personal matter. There's some different ones out there. They all basically do the same thing. They're holding your reel in place. There's a lot of debate on whether or not guys should have a real seat or whether they should be taping their reel on. Back 70s and 80s, everybody taped their reels on. That's just the way it was. Um, you took a big 704, pen 704, and you used two rolls of tape, and you put that tape on there, praying to God that that reel wasn't going to wobble. And inevitably, eventually, after four or five nights out, the reel was wobbling anyway. It was very hard to get them to, to stay tight. I personally happen to like real seats, and the reason that I like them is because during the course of the season, if you have an issue with your reel and you have your reel taped on, now you gotta take a razor blade, you gotta cut it off, you gotta take that reel, all of that tape off, and you have to start over again. Reel seats, nowadays, you put that reel in there, you got a problem, just pop the reel off and you can address the issue. Um, the other thing that comes up all the time is sensitivity. Guys say that if you tape your reel on, it's gonna be more sensitive than if you just use a real seat. My personal opinion, that's a crock of crap. All right, plain and simple. You're taking a reel and you're putting it on cork and then you're using a roll and a half of tape and you're building it up around that reel. What kind of feeling are you getting from it? A properly installed reel seat, what you're doing is underneath this reel seat, you're building up a couple of arbors underneath that this sits on. And the only thing those arbors actually do is they're holding the real seat centered to the blank. In reality, if you do this properly, you, build, you put those arbors on, and then you fill in between each one of those arbors with epoxy, now you have a solid contact to your blank. In my mind anyway, that's giving you more feeling than taping a reel on. Guys still like to tape the reels on. They like to be able to move them up and down. And that's great on an old rod with the big old guides on it where you could do that. If you have a custom made rod built and it's built concept, everything is intertwined. Your guides are laid out specifically to your reel seat location, to your reel location, excuse me. So what happens is if you move that reel, you're no longer properly lined up with your guides and you're not working to your full potential. So just a few things to think about. One of the um, very popular real seats right now is this ergonomic real seat by Fuji. And it's a great real seat. I, I happen to like them quite a bit. For one thing, with these colder days coming in, in uh, November, coming up, you don't have this front piece of metal over here. So it doesn't get quite as cold. I have arthritis in my, my hands. So what happens is my finger sitting on that cold metal, within a couple of days, my arthritis starts kicking up. The other thing is some of the Fuji reel seats, the original ones, when you put your reels in, some of the reels with the smaller reel feet, no matter what you do, you get a little wobble in there. Um, in order for the reel seat to fit the blank on some of the thicker blanks, you have to go with a certain size. This happens to be a size 20. A couple of the reels actually move a little bit. It's not as tight. This real seat locks it in tight and you don't have to worry. It's comfortable, locks in tight, you don't have to worry. Unfortunately, these come up to a size 20. So in some of those bigger blanks that are out there, you can't always get a real seat to fit. But hopefully that dispels any of the myths, the tape on versus real seats. Again, personal preference. I've always found that I get good contact by properly installing the real seat.